every time they have him on the ropes. Chris Forrest is able to respawn with the last lap charge and another victory in Can-Am Grand National Cross Country Racing. Today, he has a title on the line. Can he get it? Stay tuned. Welcome to coverage of the Can-Am Grand National Cross Country Series here on the NBC Sports Network. Unadilla Valley Sports Center in upstate New York, your host site for this, the 10th round of the 2012 season. I'm your host, Jason Wygant, and you're watching amateur riders out there on the track right now, as well as our utility machines. Getting to know the ups and downs of this Unadilla facility, very well known for its big motocross track, but we've been racing in the woods here since 2005, and a lot of the riders say it's one of the best tracks of the year. There's Taylor Kaiser, one of many, hoping to knock off the number one of Chris Boric today. They have to to keep their championship hopes alive. Boric is focused on a championship today, and that would be his fourth straight. And since he's been through this drill before, he certainly understands how to handle the pressure. No, I mean, uh, I got basically a three point or three race uh, points lead right now, so no pressure, just uh, going to go out, do the normal thing, try to go out, get a good start, um, hopefully get up front. Looks like it's going to be a really fast, slick track out there today and uh, my type of track, so looking forward to it. This would probably be the earliest, yeah, three with three races left to go would be the earliest. I think I've done it in two already, but um, this definitely would be nice to just get it over with and uh, have fun at the last three. And Boric has a big points lead because he has won six in a row this year and looking for a seventh today. No doubt he's all smiles. The Yamaha boys trying to take him down. There's Kaiser, and don't forget his rookie teammate, Walker Fowler. A lot of anticipation of Fowler versus Boric this year. Now Fowler just wants a win. The title's pretty much out of reach. There's the number two of Adam McGill. He is certainly a contender as well. They are just a sampling of the types of talent that can go out there and win on any given race day. The Can-Am Unadillo GNCC about to get underway. We'll race for two hours in the woods. Let's go. And Boric with our helmet cam, atrocious start. Rocky Mountain giving you this footage here, and he's got a rocky road because this track is known for a lot of little rocks under the soil, and he's going to be eating those as he tries to move forward. Brian Wolf on the JG Off-Road Honda, leading the way early over McGill. Jared McClure is third, and how did Boric get up to fourth? A couple of outside lines for those first few turns really paid off, and passes a lot harder to make once you're deep into the woods like this. By the way, no surprise to see Chris Bithell way back. That guy never gets good starts, but do not be surprised if he works his way all the way forward. Still Wolf, McGill, and McClure. Then it's Boric. That's uh, Kevin Yoho, I believe, coming up next. Then I see Kaiser. This is uh, Johnny Gallagher. The rest of the field coming through. That's Walker Fowler, so bad starts for the Yamaha boys. How about Brian Wolf? I say it every week on this show, he has the speed to run with anyone. He is bad fast. Now he's had some bad luck this year, had a staff infection in his hand that he suffered right before the season opener in Florida. It really wasn't until Snowshoe a couple of rounds ago that he was even able to ride during the week and was really able to hang on for two hours in the races. So now that we've had a summer break, some time off, Wolf has had the opportunity to get some seat time in and it's paying off right now as he leads McGill and McClure. And McClure, I've got to say, most improved this year. He's always been a strong contender. But on that uh, Coastal Drilling Bowers Yokely Racing Honda, he has really stepped up this year. And there have been a lot of races where McClure gets the good start like he does today. And he runs with the front pack all day long, certainly learning a lot from that. I wouldn't be surprised to see McClure contend for a win before the year is up. Today could be the day. It's close between these three. Wolf, McGill, and McClure on the seven. And they have pulled away from Boric. I mentioned at the top of the show, one of the most popular stops on the tour. Expecting 1,900 riders here with the ATV and dirt bike count on the dirt bike show coming up next week. 
And all those people, of course, bringing a lot of fans, friends, and family with them. And you hear them in the woods. They're cheering. You're uh, defending GNCC champion Chris Borch trying to power him toward the front. And it looks like Walker Fowler has stepped up to try to run with Borch and go in formation. McGill taking the lead from Wolf, and there is McClure in third. These guys just trying to maintain this. I don't think they're worried about each other right now. As long as, as long as they can maintain that pace and keep Boric at bay, they'll be happy. And speaking of Boric, more Rocky Mountain helmet cam action. This is Gravity Cavity, one of the most famous jumps in all of motocross, but you've got to respect it on a cross-country machine. They don't have the suspension set up the motocrossers do. First of all, it needs to be softer to handle all these little rocks and roots out in the woods. Second, they don't have the wheel travel because if you run the wide, long travel A-arms, you can't fit two sections like this. Stay with us. The can -Am Renegade 1000 XXC with the most powerful engine in the industry. The Outlander 1000 XT with a redesigned chassis for unequal trail riding. The Commander 1000 Limited, the most equipped, luxurious side-by-side -side in the industry. The facts say it's the most advanced lineup out there. But the ride says it all. Racer TV is brought to you by Can-Am, by Amsoil, and by Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Adam McGill continuing to lead the way here with NBC Sports coverage of the Can-Am Grand National Cross Country Series. Brian Wolf, Jared McClure, second and third, no change in the order, including fourth place, Chris Borich. But Borich, he's the shark in the waters. I can guarantee you that McGill, even though he's got a nice little lead right now, is thinking, where is he, where is he? You know you're going to have to contend with Borich before these races are over. Look at the shot through the woods here. This is just primo stuff. They got good dirt. The trees lead to a challenging layout, but uh, you can see a lot of the lines. Not a lot of leaves down, and you can see through these trees. Great battle here for second and third, McClure and Wolf, and Borich has closed the gap. So the race now is for second. And McGill is going to try to put his head down and get away. Then you have Fowler in fifth. You saw he was in touch with Borich just a little bit early. The field has gotten away from him. We'll see if the youngster from Ohio can run them back down. Look at that shot. Looks like Wolf and McClure have pulled back up on your leader, McGill. Borich is back there in fourth. This is what GNCC ATD racing is all about. Tremendous racing, tremendous action. It almost belies the fact that Borich is able to win so many darn races and titles because they're usually hotly contested right down to the end. Borich making the move on Wolf, pushes Wolf back to fourth, and here comes Fowler. Might have a five rider battle up front, but uh, McGill's saying no, I want it to be a one rider battle. And he's pulled back away from this pack. McClure, Wolf, who's gotten back in front of Borich. And you know Fowler will be back there too. And here's the motocross track. Certainly an opportunity to make some passes. You can find a line. Nice job by McGill to get up to the top of that little step up. Now they're going into gravity cavity. And a feed off the pegs. I'll tell you what, McGill, he is fun to watch. He throws him off again. He is a fun loving guy on and off the track. Really has the spirit of this thing down. I know it's serious racing at this level, but uh, he has fun first. I think the theory is, when you're having fun, you're treating it like a hobby, not a profession. It takes the pressure off, and you ride better without pressure. Although deep down inside, the ultimate goal of all these riders is to win. To do that, though, they've got to stop Borich. Back up to third, there's Fowler. Every time Fowler makes a run, they're able to get back away from him. Now onto the sky shot, and nice job not only clearing it, but throwing it a little freestyle. McClure in second, jumping that no problem. Let's see how Borich attacks it, and Borich chooses not to jump the big double. And that is a good 90-footer. And to do that on an ATV, again, that's set up for the woods and not motocross, that is impressive. And Fowler, a couple of years ago over that jump, was throwing can-cans uh, and knack-knacks and all kinds of things, fist pumps. Over that jump right now is a little bit more locked in because he needs to go to the leaders. And by the way, we have lost Wolf from this group. And that has happened too many times. Like I said, the speed has been there for Wolf, but he has had lots of bad luck. And now it is Fowler in fourth. 
Not sure where Wolf is. Must have run into trouble. Now we're going to see how this race plays out. Unadilla's track is a little bit shorter than most on the tour, but we're still going to run a two-hour race. So they're expected to do six laps today, where we normally do four or five. Usually the lap times are about a half an hour. Here they're about 21 minutes. So you just run more laps. The difference is that the shorter track often means you get into lap riders more readily. So we'll see how that affects the running game. These two are trying to get away. These two white Hondas first McGill and here McClure. And they can do a good job of that early, but eventually you're going to hit lap traffic, and that's going to slow you up. The lap riders are almost like a pace car out there. And maybe Boric is waiting for that moment to make his move. But you just cannot get Fowler out of this game. Every time I think it's done, he catches back up. And Boric has now caught the two leaders. And I think that was Fowler working, lurking back there as well. Yes, it is. So I think everyone's starting to get a feel for the terrain, a feel for what lines they want to take. They're in the groove now. And let's see who wants it the most. McGill holding Boric at bay. And here we go through the pits. And Boric has taken over the lead. But now it's going to be a battle of pit stops. And there goes Fowler, who does not pit. So that might put him into the lead. And it begs the question, where is McClure? He has not come through yet. And look at that. Quicker pit stop work puts McGill back in front of Boric. Now Fowler has the lead. And he's able to air it out over that big sky shot the way he likes. And he's going to try to run away with it. But what is the pit strategy? Does he have enough fuel to make it all the way around? I'll tell you right now, Boric knows he has got to try to get back within striking distance of Fowler. He can pass him in the pits the next lap around, but it's not going to be easy because he has McGill to contend with. They're off the motocross track, into the woods, now back out and back onto the motocross track, and look at Fowler putting the hammer down. Boric and McGill are in hot pursuit. You can tell things are starting to pick up here at Unadilla. Stay with us on Racer TV. When it's time to get ready to ride and you need gear, it's time to go to RockyMountainATV.com. With the largest selection of ATV parts, apparel, and accessories, we have what you need at deep discounts. We have a huge state-of-the-art facility that ensures your order ships out quickly with accuracy that's second to none. Most items ship free and arrive at your door in three days or less. Visit our industry-leading website, RockyMountainATV.com today for the best prices, quickest shipping, online support, and largest in-stock selection around. RockyMountainATV.com. Get ready. Racer TD is brought to you by Can-Am, by Amsoil, and by Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Give you the highlights of the morning race from this morning at Yilla. Utility class off the line. This is the open division. Brian Buchanan here on the inside grabbing the lead. But a little shout out to the number four. Look at that. That is Tim Farr on the Polaris, multi-time ATV motocross champ, who actually helps out with uh, Brian Wolf's machine and a lot of others out here. Decided to run open 4x4 today and can definitely go fast, battling Buchanan throughout most of the day. Don't forget about guys like Michael Swift, who are always in the uh, hunt in this class. Definitely fun to watch. When it was all said and done, though, Buchanan would hang on and take the win. Then we have the unlimited utility division. No surprise, Cliff Beasley, who was now hinted at retirement, looking to go out on top this year with another championship in that class. Robert Smith is the man trying to challenge Beasley today for that utility unlimited win. And the women's class, there's TLC, Tracy Checo, working on another championship, and she too has hinted at possibly retiring, but wants to go out on top on the number 202 Yamaha. Checo recently married to Jeff Pickens of the pro class. She wins the women's class today. There is Dave Simmons. The 45 plus class winner is also your overall winner in the morning on Adjust the Time. Shout out to Gary Chamberlain, New York Zone, who finished his second to Simmons in the class and overall this morning. Now back to our afternoon race, and man, things have tightened up. Walker Fowler, who had the lead, has now lost it again. It is uh, Adam McGill in the lead. He's had it about five times today. And he has Boric just draped all over him. And we knew strategy would play a game. Maybe they got around Fowler uh, in the pits. Here we go, two laps to go. Fowler, though, is still in this right behind them. So it could be a three-rider fight. 
And with two laps to go, you put yourself in position. And that last lap is going to be just a mad dash. And you can see no more feet off the pegs action from McGill leading the way. Got to play a little more conservatively when you're battling for the number one spot. There is McClure back to fourth. These three have really dropped the hammer and it's allowed them to get away just a bit. Over the big jump and Borich is starting to air it out as well. And McClure has closed it back up. Four riders now battling for it. And into the woods we go again. A lot of these riders would prefer to be in the number two spot often at this stage of the race, but uh, McGill gets a lot of laps led in. Clearly, he likes trying to win the race from the front, where a lot of guys will wait, they'll follow, they'll learn the lines from you, and then try to set you up. How about McClure back there in fourth, trying to get around Fowler? All four of these riders' information down to this section, a different line for Borich and McGill. And McGill has come to a stop. McGill's machine has stopped running trying to thumb that electric starter button and get it back going again. And it's over for him just like that. No he's idea. taking the race. Uh, I don't know, it was riding real bad. I think we had a top end come apart, so I don't know, man. I'm over it. I'm ready for next year. Bad. Good move by the cameraman to get the interview there. But yes, that has been the case way too often for McGill this year. Way too many mechanical problems. And I alluded to that at the top of the show. He switched to a new machine this year. He has been fast, but they have not found the reliability they're hoping for. Right now, Boric leading Fowler and McClure. So what was once a four-rider battle is now down to three. Fowler looking for alternate lines. Not normally the position that Boric is in. He is usually the rider waiting for the last lap to take the lead instead of leading earlier like this. We'll see if turnabout is fair play. I don't think Fowler or McClure is going to let him go. Through the pitch we go again, winding through the gearbox. One lap left, stay tuned. Eddie Engine. Any season. At home. At the track. or on the trail. Amsoil, the first in synthetics. Racer TV is brought to you by Can-Am. By Amsoil. And by Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Getting ready for the stretch run here, Racer TV's coverage of the Can-Am Grand National Cross Country Series. Chris Borch awaiting the white flag. One lap to go. If he can win the race today, the Pennsylvanian will be now a four-time GNCC champion. But literally and figuratively, he is not out of the woods yet. Walker Fowler, you see, is right there behind him. And I think they're all just playing the chess game right now. Not even much hustle as they come through this section. They have got their spots picked out on the last lap. They're going to try to make their move. They don't want to show their hand early. Borich in and out, Fowler still right there. And Jerry McClure, who has run maybe the best race he has ever run in his career, still in sight of the lead with a lap to go. Here's the big double, the sky shot. And Borich takes a look over at the fans to the side. And these guys, well, they are all systems go looking forward, and it's McClure ahead of Fowler now. And Fowler, you can see that uh, string dangling behind him. That is the film from the roll-offs on his goggles. So he is going to have a tough time if he catches any roost off the tires of McClure or Boric. And he will not be able to get a fresh view through those goggles. Boric, a rare position here leading on the last lap. He often takes the lead on the last lap. Sometimes prefers to start this one out in second, but he was gifted the lead when Adam McGill's engine blew up. While he was leading this thing, Boric even looked over his shoulder as if to say, oh, hey, what are you doing? I, I don't want to take the lead this early. 